What's up everyone? This is Big Poner and this is going to be the video introducing the first build guide pre-league launch of what I will be using as my league starter. Um, I put a ton of time into this. I've tested with different ascendancies. I've tried the different weapons. This is absolutely the best one um, and by a big margin as far as numbers it's amazing and as far as like being able to fix like any issue like without having to change the backbone of this layout. Um, it, this is just a really awesome um, really awesome layout. Um, I put a lot of time into it and it's going to work really well. Um, so I'm actually really excited. I'm really excited to play this character. What I am planning on playing is going to be a Frostblades character. However, I'm not going to be doing another um, Frostblade Raider. Uh, the reason why is just because it's just not as good anymore. There have been some repeated nerfs to um, the Raider class and they've kind of added up um, to now with the changes to the availability of defensive choices and the the nerfing of defenses and percent increased effect of inside of the Raider Ascendancy. Raider just is um, inferior now to my selection, which is going to be the Marauder. We're going to be doing a Berserker, um, Frostblade Berserker this league, um, and it's going to be pretty awesome. So I've got basically the, the whole thing laid out, and it's a low-level layout, and then from that low-level layout, you will be able to take and add, remove whatever it is that you need or don't need um, to make the build work the best for you. And so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and jump into it. And I will go ahead and go over everything that you need to know. We'll start off with the mastery. The mastery is great. Um, I'm personally going to be starting off with Flawless Savagery. I might actually pick this up early just because that 20 to 30 um, physical damage early is just going to be like a massive damage spike to the build um, when you don't have a lot of gear and, you know, the, the base damage on weapons isn't very high. 20 to 30 damage is a lot. 25% multiplier, 50% critical strike chance. After that, I'm going to go for the, the Crave the Slaughter. This is basically like adding uh, a rage support to to your your character. That's awesome. Then I'm gonna go for this because there's not a big downside to it, and um, it triples the effects of rage, which are that's huge. Um, we're gonna have 70 max rage, so that's a hundred and this adds 140 um, uh, extra percent attack damage, 210 total, um, an extra an extra 70 attack speed and an extra 35 um or 140 20 20 25 25 movement speed um so that's uh, a huge uh, a, a huge a huge buff there and then we're going to finish it off with the blitz um blitz is a huge damage boost but it's going to gain you the most once you already have gear because it it gives you more attack speed at the cost of losing 8% um, 8% crit chance for every 2% more speed. Um, so we're going to need a lot of crit chance in this build. And obviously, as you get further into gearing, you're going to have more crit chance. Um, so the first thing that I want to touch on is in order to get the effect of this, you have to crit. Um, so probably one of the first things that we're going to wind up picking up is we're going to fill in these sword nodes here. And we're going to wind up taking this sword mastery that gives 120% critical strike chance. Um, with negative 20 to multiplier. So it's a lot of crit chance with the negative to multiplier, but it's going to be really good for it um, early. If you wind up getting to a place where you can get near 100% crit chance without having that negative, you, then you're going to want to switch the sword mastery. We're going to want to pick up tribal fury um, early, but this is going to be four points that we'll wind up dropping once we have gear. The reason why is because our goal is going to be to have three attacks per strike. Um, I personally like to to put my Whispers of Doom on my necklace. You could wind up doing Tribal Fury on your necklace if you wind up having a plus one curse on your um, on your chest, but like that's later down the road. For early, having the two strikes is not only going to increase our clear, but it's also going to increase our single target, and I'll talk more about that once we go into the skill setups that I've chosen. Um, early... 
this is where we're going to want to go to pick this stuff up. Um, the reason why is because we get a nice, um, we get a nice, the constitution here, and then another life mastery. Um, this attack mastery, we're definitely going to want to pick up the berserking, um, because it's 10 to max rage. Um, that's, um, an extra 10% attack speed, uh, 10%, um, uh, 30% attack damage, 30 times to 15% attack speed and... 4% movement speed. So we're definitely going to want to get this, and then we get the attack mastery. Um, so we're definitely going to want to get that, but we're not going to need that until we have the... until we have this Crave the Slaughter, so our second Ascendancy. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's not... It doesn't need to be the first thing that you run up to fill in, but you're definitely going to want it. Um, so coming down here, we're going to need the Disciple of Slaughter for sure. Um, this is going to give us uh, our our frenzy charge generation um, in mapping, um, eight percent on kill. That's going to fill us up. Um, the and I'll, I'm covering the, the frenzy charge generation first because we need these two things for frenzy charge generation without having it on gear. Um, in the sword mastery, we're going to need the eight percent chance to gain frenzy charge when hitting a unique, unique enemy. So that's going to cover it for bosses. Um, outside of bosses, you don't really see too many unique enemies, so that's not going to really help anywhere else. That's the reason why we need both. Um, but this is going to wind up also giving us a bunch of um, good DPS and stuff like... Uh, this is going to wind up giving us a bunch of good DPS and stuff. Um, and more movement speed and and attack speed and stuff like that. So, so that's going to be good. Um, yeah. Another important thing that you need to get early, this is pretty important. We need to get one of these cold masteries up. Um, I'm going to say both of them are going to be important to take um, because we're going to be converting physical into cold damage. So th this is really strong. We get 14% more physical as, as extra cold. Um, that's really strong. Plus the, the masteries for taking two of these is really strong. We have to have the 40% convert physical converted to cold um, in order to have full conversion because the frost blades only convert 60% of physical damage to cold. So we have to have this um, first because that's going to make it so that all of our damage is going to be turned to cold, so we'll just be dealing cold damage, and it will be gaining uh, multipliers from all of our other stuff. So that one first, then this is really good. Um, cold Explosion inflicts another, an extra negative 5 to cold resistance. We're going to have exposure um, built into the build uh, as soon as you can get into the skills, which is going to be the Hydrosphere. So that's going to be really strong. This exposure bonus here is also really strong. At exposure inflict, inflict applies at least a negative 18 to the affected re resistance. So that's pretty good too. Um, so that's good. Um, that That's really strong also. Um, the rest of these, you know, like two points to get 10, 16% life and a mastery. Um, that's a really good life life node. Um, if you're going to drop a life setup, this one would be the one to drop just because it's a 5%. Um, these are 5% ones, and this is a 10. Um, so you get more right here. This is 16% for 2 points versus 20% for 4 points. So if you were going to drop something, that would be the one. This one you're getting slightly more also because you have 22 for 3 um, with the mastery. Um, so... So if you were going to fill one in last, this would be the last one. But as it's set up right now, um, this would be for a level 91 build, which is pretty attainable, easy. But if you were to drop that off, that would be to, to 87. Um, so, so that's very attainable. Um, and the quick transition and easy transition that I was talking about is basically like this isn't all your points filled in. Most people, you know, their goals like 94, 95, something like that. So you'd have some more points to put in, kind of like set us off aside to go ahead and try to do our clusters. We are going to wind up adding clusters. Um, eventually, you're going to wind up adding clusters for sure. Um, the Feed the Fury, uh, Martial Proas, and um, Fuel the Fight would probably be the first one you want to do because that's going to give you life leech, mana leech, um, and just a ton of damage through attack speed. If you need mana generation because you're not getting it from a gear, um, this is the super easy answer to that. Two points here. 
Um, this get, gives us Mana Leech. Um, that's an issue solved right there. We get a decent little bonus right here to damage. 30% increased damage while leeching. Or you could get more total mana recovery per second. Um, it, obviously, if the two points into those things, you're getting plenty of mana back, then you don't need that. If you need more mana back, then you could go ahead and hit this. If it's good as it is, you can just take the 30% extra damage. That takes us to 93. Um, but that's why I'm kind of telling you that you could drop that one early um defensive choices if you're like in a place where you're like we're like oh my defenses aren't good enough we have a bunch of options for more defenses um and this was like what i was saying about the way that this one is set up is like all those options are basically right there um if you wanted to take this more defensive using kind of the new um system we can go this way we can put five points this way we can take Mage Bane, which is going to turn our Dexterity into Spell Suppression. And then we can take and turn our Evasion into um, into Armor. The reason why this works really well is because this makes, um, this makes us get 1% Spell Suppression for every um, 15 Dexterity. And then if we're turning our... Evasion into armor, Dexterity provides no bonus to evasion rating, which um, Dexterity knows, provides no inherent bonus to evasion rating. So, like, they, they kind of go hand in hand. And then we have another one that can tie into that if we want to stack suppression. We can do these two right here. 4% um, chance to suppress, 10% chance to suppress, and then we can get another 10%. And this is the reason why we do that, that evasion um, so we wind up getting 24% suppression here, but we have to have evasion on our helm, gloves, and boots, but that actually works out pretty good because, um, all of our evasion is going to get turned into armor and then it's going to benefit, um, from, from our, our armor being buffed up. So that would be one choice that you could do. That would take us to a level 100. Obviously we'd have to drop something, um, if that was the route you're going to do, but we have a lot of points that we can that we're going to wind up getting away, um, getting away from. But that's kind of just a choice there, just something to to keep in mind. We could drop four points in this life area, and it and that would take us down to 96. Um, I'm probably going to be more more damage focused in this. Um, and this was, I actually already had some defenses included. I've got, I've got block, um, block beefed up some already in this. Um, if you were going to go like spell suppression and stuff like that, um, if, if you needed more defenses, you could keep this and you could go for spell suppression too. You'd have a 15% chance to block spell damage. You'd have a decent ch chance to suppress spell damage, which reduces spell damage taken by 50%. Um, that that would be throwing in some some layers of defenses and then also you'd have you know focus on on everything being armor so you'd have the physical damage reduction and you'd also have the you know like I'm gonna be using immortal call and they're also gonna be stacking life um, so so that would put some layers of defenses in there um, these are another four points you could choose to drop if you're like I am not really interested in stacking um, in stacking block chance right now I've got you know 38% um, block chance we could drop that um, that would be four points off and we'd be at um, we'd be at a 27 percent block chance so we'd lose some block chance there but but that would be a way you could trim it down even more if survivability is not an issue for you don't fill these points in early if you start needing more survivability this could be um, an answer to go to um, but this is how I would say I'm probably going to be set up early which is the way that I'll go ahead and give it to you guys is like this. So this would be a level 88 build. So this will be my first 88 points is the way that it's set up just like this. And this is going to give me the early the early extra strike so that it's going to work well with, with the Hydrosphere, um, which will boost my single target and my map clearing. My mana generation until I get gear to generate mana. Um, Frenzy Charge generation for both in map and against bosses. Um, and then like all my basics, my basic stuff like rage generation, a healthy amount of life 
um, percent from the tree. We've got 120 percent increased life from the tree. So I should have a nice life pool. Should have um, should have good damage and stuff like that. And then from there, um, it's basically just going to be adding clusters for me. Um, and when I add clusters, I'll drop this. So this will be two points off. So this will basically for a 95 build, I'll have another what? Um, it'd be 10, 10, 10 points, uh, nine points. And then I could drop four points here. And so, yeah, that would get me into my, my first large cluster with extra points left over. Um, so that would, that would work pretty well. Um, that's pretty much the setup. I mean, you can make the changes that you want. The only other thing that I want to say about the masteries, um, this could be changed around to what you want. Um, the 50% increased effect of non-damaging ailments you inflict with critical strikes. This could be good once you have like shock, um, like later on with gear, or just the extra 25% multiplier against bosses. I mean, that's when you really need it. You could also go defensive, which is the reduced... Um, you take 30% reduced extra damage from critical strikes. That would be um, a, a nice... Um, a nice defensive choice if you're, you know, having trouble surviving. Um, so yeah, that's this is probably just going to be the go-to. Um, this here, the precision. This is something I'm definitely going to say to take. It's just really nice because we want to stack up. We want to have 100% hit chance, and we want to try to get as close as we possibly can to 100% crit chance, which that's going to be kind of hard with us um, having you know, 20 stacks of blitz charges. So this helps us because it's gonna make it so that we can have a level 20 precision at half the mana cost. That's what 100% increased mana reservation does is basically for every two points of mana reservation efficiency, you get 1% lower cost um, on the reservation. So the way that it's set up, um, it's actually functional um, with, with the skill setup that I have, I have 89 unreserved mana, which I think is about, yeah, five mana over what, here, look, which is five mana over what, um, my build is running as w with the Raider and it's going to be like the same skills. So it, it should work well. Um, so let's go ahead and go over skills. So I've got all the skills set up. Um, I threw just kind of some random gear in here. The, the DPS calculation that you can see is with um, really bad crafted foils. I put 101% um, physical, which is like lower than what's craft onable with able to be crafted on with the dual mod, um, like blind and percent damage. That, that would be like a low roll on that blind and percent damage. Um, or... Also, the number to number is low, is below what you could roll with crafted, um, and then 15% attack speed, 15 out of 29%, so a, a bad roll of attack speed, and then 24% critical strike chance, which is less than half, which is middle of the road of crit chance also. So just basically four rolls, but all like middle of the road or like not good rolls. So these would be really easy to make foils. Um, I don't have a helm on specifically because um, if you need an even more like big damage boost and your survivability is not an issue, this is the the abyssus is a really good choice. Um, like you just get crazy damage out of it. I played with it last league and I tend to play with it like early league just as like a big damage boost. Um, like kind of like I don't care if I die, I'm playing standard like. Just throw it on, do crazy damage, and then once I can afford to get a conflux helm, I'd throw in a conflux helm. So I've got like a, like a basically like a bad conflux helm here um, that's just basically only has conflux on it. Um, obviously, like th that's not end game type gear, but um, yeah. So all the gear that I basically have on here, the only thing that's actually affecting the dps so this is kind of like blank kind of like blank gear um would be the the two percent um to critical strike chance um that is affecting it so that's something to note like if we were to take that off i'd be at 95 percent 
Um, but like the spike gloves are basically just a base um, because all it has is uh, life and the implicit, which is a 20% melee. So that's the only thing affecting that. Boots, um, there's nothing affecting damage there. So this is kind of like just like blank gear. There is a little bit of stuff on the on the rings. We've got an opal ring on, but I basically just put on um, rings that add the two curses that we're going to want on the rings so you know what to go for as far as your curses. Um, I don't have all the, the, the flasks filled in. Um, I've got the two fight for survival jewels. You're going to want two fight for survivals. I went ahead and put those in so you know where to put them um, so that you get the bonuses. They're huge bonuses. We get 12.9% uh, increased damage for throwing those in. Um, and you get one while you're mapping as a choice, um, as a reward. And then you should be able to pick one up super cheap um, just off of a trade site. Um, so that's how you're going to want to do that. Um, and then like the, the other... The other jewel spots, uh, jewel spot, and then eventually cluster jewels, and then you're going to want um, uh, crit jewels in there. So let's talk about the other skills. Um, I've already covered why frostbite and elemental weakness are in here, because we're going to go for those um, as our, as two curses. Um, the frostblades, this is the setup that I'm going to recommend. This is what I'm going to be using um, with changes to awakened gems. This is going to make it so that we... Um, at level 5 with the Awakened Elemental Damage with Attack Skills, we will be immune to Reflected Elemental Damage, which will make it so that we can play anything, um, and we don't have to worry about Reflected Damage anymore. Increased Criticals is basically going to be required. Um, I don't like the Multi-Strike for this build. The reason why is because we're going to be trying to scale our Icy Blades and our Melee Hit, and the Icy Blades are actually going to lose damage, um, having multi-strike in them, so it's not beneficial for both of them. So, like, if I took this out and put on this, we lose just a lot of our icy blade damage, um, and we need to get that that crit chance up. Um, we're going to be running inspiration. Also, um, the better inspiration is going to be the the anomalous. I guess I should go and change that. Um, so, the anomalous is what we're going to be going for for that. Um, but yeah, th these are what you're going to want to use. Um, th these are the best balance of damage, um, and they provide the most as far as stacking both our melee hit and our projectile. Eventually, the increased critical strike um, can be traded out for something that's going to give you more damage once your gear provides enough um, base crit and crit chance. However, I'm putting this in there because by the time you reach that point, I'll have out another guide. Um, like basically um like the updated version if you're new to the channel i normally do three guides on my starter build um so there'll be an early guide that comes out like within a week after the the launch it'll basically be like an update like tips and stuff like that whatever's like cheap on the market easy to get to um, get your upgrades um, and i'll start doing crafting videos and stuff like that and then a little ways down the road There'll be like kind of like an end game build guide that will like show you your goal. Um, and then if I'm stopping to play it, let you know what else you can do with it to take it even further. The auras that we're going to go for, Hatred, um, Herald of Ice, and the Precision. Um, I have it in there as a 20 out of 20 um, precision. And the reason why is because since we're going to be taking that precision reduction, it's actually going to be realistic for us to have Hatred, Herald of Ice, and Precision all level 20. Um, which is dope, and that's without any um, enlightened support. Um, so that's cool. It makes it so that everyone can go for that. Once you can have an enlightened, then you will be able to add in um, another aura. Um, you could go for something defensive, like you could go for flesh and stone, or you could go for um, uh, like herald, um, herald of purity, which is what I'm running in this build. I actually, I'm running four auras. Um, hatred, precision, um, well, five auras. I'm also running um, frost armor, but we won't be running that in. Um, in, I won't be using um, zodiac in in this in the berserker build, so that won't be there. But my end goal will be hatred, p p hatred, um, herald of ice, uh, precision, and either purity or some type of a defensive. Um, defensive aura but this covers full full gems we've got 
Blood Rage. Um, this Whirling Blade setup is the one thing that I do have to 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 make a mention on. My plan is to try out um, Whirling Blades ca cast on critical with Hydrosphere and Tornado. I think Tornado sounds awesome, and the cool thing is is that we can actually use Tornado and Hydrosphere together um, because Frost Blades has the melee hit and the projectile hit, which this is the reason why it's kind of important for us to be scaling up. Well, there's a lot of reasons why it's important for us to scale up the both the melee hit and the projectile hit. The main reason is if we're striking three different things and we're fighting a boss and the boss is the only thing that's there and I whirling blades through him and my tornado and my hydrosphere are down and I'm hitting all three, that means the boss is taking one melee hit and then two projectile hits from the, the other two hits splitting off their projectiles. Also, in that scenario where both of those things are up and there's a boss, I'm going to be hitting all three things and two projectiles are going to be going into the tornado, which the tornado is able to absorb 20 projectiles and then it takes 10% of that damage and adds it to the tornado's damage, which means essentially 20 times our 20 times point point one is two. So it will take two times our projectile damage and add it to the tornado, which basically means with no modifiers to the tornado and no base damage on the tornado, the tornado will be hitting for two times our projectile damage. That's another reason why it's important for us to have a high projectile, a high conversion of our projectile damage because the boss is going to be taking two hits from our projectiles and going to be taking two times our projectile damage from the tornado, which means the boss or a single target will be taking four times our projectile damage, one times our um, melee hit. So it's basically going to be like he's getting hit by us five times. <laughs> um, so that will definitely be um, pretty dope for our single target. Also, we're going to have more damage that's not set up in the configuration. Um, obviously, you know, I, if you guys have ever played any of my guides, I pretty much always go for... for for high shock values, which is going to be really easy to hit this league through the masteries. Um, I don't have shock set up in here. Um, I don't have, um, we'll probably go for intimidates. Um, I don't have that set up in here. The, the, um, also a huge damage that you're not seeing in, in the numbers that are showing here is also the, the exposure. Um, using the hydrosphere, the hydrosphere applies exposure, and also we have set up in our masteries um, several things that buff up our um, our exposure. So there's going to be a lot more added damage um, from those from those mechanics that you're not seeing here that I haven't plugged into the build. Um, but basically, it should be really easy to with this tree set up um, get comparable. Um, Comparably much higher DPS than what you're seeing here. Um, especially since now I don't have a helm or a belt um, showing here. And these foils should be super easy to make something that's better than this. Just by using like like physical fossil crafting like single resonators or using essences on just a jeweled foil. You should be able to get better stuff than what I've put in here. Um, very easily, as you can see, 265 DPS. Um, just keep in mind, you're going to want high crit chance um, on them so that you're able to get that effective high crit hit chance um, as easily as possible. What is put in here already is the 20... Um, uh, I don't have that. Oh, wait, no, maybe I don't have 20 of these. All right, there we go. Now I got 20. Okay, so so yeah, you need to, you're going to need to get... Um, your goal is going to be to have high crit chance on, on your one-handed weapons. Um, as far as uniques, there are going to be some uniques you could go after. Um, we could go after for an amulet. Um, you can go after the the Halcyon. Or Pandemonious. Um, you can go for the Pandemonious. This is going to be um, a pretty easy socket in um, for, for good damage. That, that would be something you could go for. I think a lot of people are going to be playing um, Breaches. So maybe if you're playing Breach, um, when you get one, you can go ahead and throw it on there. Um, that, that's going to be an easy slot that you could throw onto your build. Um, rings, you could go for, for the Taming. That wouldn't be a bad choice. Um, 
like if if they're cheap i'd rather go for the curses um but that wouldn't be a bad thing to go for um you could also go for the paradoxical rapier um from syndicate my guess is though that they're going to probably be pretty expensive um maybe not though um it seems like a lot of people are probably going to be playing like poison builds and stuff like that so that's um a, a unique choice you could go for um and with the the league mechanic there's probably going to be some some pretty insane paradoxical rapiers that can wind up getting made um but then again if there's not a lot of people playing syndicate uh that's going to make the rapier probably pretty expensive um so not everyone's going to be able to to gamble with a league mechanic on those um and realistically you know you're going to be able to craft foils that are going to be better than most paradoxical rapiers unless you get a good one um so i would probably i i'm going to suggest just trying to craft yourself some nice foils um that's probably going to be the best route um just slamming you know some some physical essences on some some jeweled foils um early and then work on trying to make some better ones or maybe hop in the new upgraded delve that's supposed to give you more resonators and more fossils um maybe do that for a little bit try it out and you know fossil craft yourself a couple decent foils to carry yourself through the game till you save up some currency to to you know craft really nice ones or buy really nice ones um but it should be a really good um really really good build um I didn't put in all the optimal. I've got a Life Flask, Quicksilver, um, the Wise Oak, Bottled Faith, and Taste of Hate. Those are going to be the basic flasks to go for. Um, the Atziris is also going to be another good choice. I just throw those on there um, to show you what I'll probably wind up with. Uh, might do Atziris. Um, we'll see. Um, the Reduced Ref... Uh, yeah, I don't know which one I'll wind up doing. Um... Or you could wind up going just all damage flasks, which would be Bottle Faith, Taste of Hate, Wise Oak, Atziris, and then also the Cinder Swallow. Um, that would be the max damage um, five slots for unique um, unique flasks. But that's pretty much it. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, leave a comment. I'll try to ask. I'll try to respond. Um, one thing I will say: the reason why I wouldn't go Lion's Roar. Uh, it does add a bunch of armor, which maybe if you need a defensive choice, but since it's since it's more physical damage, um, it, that's only going to affect your, your primary hit. Uh, so, uh, you know, um, if you need more, if you need more armor, that, that might not be a bad choice if you're looking at more for defense. Um, but as I've said, you know, I'm trying to scale M my, my goal is going to be to scale both the, 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 the physical hit and the projectiles at the same time um so that's going to be my focus uh, one other thing that i'll say about that is that's really cool as we have this this projectile um projectile uh crit chance and crit multiplier this actually benefits both the melee hit and the um both the melee hit and the projectile and the reason why is because it says Projectile attack skills have 50% increase. Well, um, Frost Blades is a projectile skill, and it doesn't say that it affects the projectile. It affects the skill. So we can actually use this, and this is actually going to be a really nice spot for us to go. Um, you can see 11% increase damage there for going through these. Or you could use one more point, and you can go this way, which gives us even more multiplier. So instead of that, we can get these two 10% multipliers. That's going to be really nice. Um, and then, you know, you can 1% increase projectile damage. Um, or you could do knockback, maybe a little bit of defense. I don't know. It picks something there, but that's going to be another really nice place to pick up a lot of damage um, really easily. Um, there's another place that we can stack up our, our critical chance and multiplier um, that's right there if we want it. Um, so I'm super stoked about this build. I put a ton of time into it. Um, I think it's going to be amazing. Um, once you add clusters to it and gear to it, it's just going to get crazy, crazy better. Um, so I'm super stoked. I hope everyone else is stoked about this league. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. 
Uh, best of luck to everyone on this league. We're less than 24 hours out from the launch. Thanks for watching. If you're not yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you got any questions, go ahead and let me know, and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching. Peace.